in time. And you look at what happens in verse 13. People were bringing little children to Jesus to have him touch them, but the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant. He said to them, let the little children come to me. Now, what's really happening here? What's really happening here? In other words, Jesus was busy doing Jesus things. Jesus had a schedule to keep, right? He had dead people to raise to life. Amen? Man, he had blind eyes to open. He had deaf ears to heal. He had lame legs, and he was ready to revive so they could walk and, and move around. <coughs> Excuse me. And he had, he had Jesus things to do. You know what I mean? And he was preaching. He was in the middle of preaching and doing some teaching. And these parents had the nerve to come up and say, Excuse me, Jesus, could we just interrupt everything and you just you play with my kids? And so the disciples were like, no, we're not going to have that. And then Jesus, Jesus rebuked, not the parents, he rebuked the disciples. In other words, Jesus was busy, but he said, I have time for the children. Amen, family? He's like, I'm busy, but I will make time for the children. And then what did he do? He just loved on the kids. Now, at this point, I want to ask you a really, really important question. Any uh, race car fans in the room? Any race car fans? All right, NASCAR, keep them up. Formula One, Formula One, both. All right, who, who picks Formula One over NASCAR? All right, who picks NASCAR over Formula One? I've been, uh, I've been practicing my NASCAR skills. Are you guys ready for it? Yeah. Left turn, left turn, left turn, left turn. I can do that for hours, left turn. Er, and I'm just joking. I've been, I've been watching some racing movies, and the type of athleticism that these guys have to actually do what they do um, is awesome, especially, I just learned what the 24-hour Le Mans is. You guys, who knows what the 24-hour Le Mans is? Man, oh my goodness. Um, they're incredible athletes. But I think what's even more, what's as incredible are their pit crews, right? These pit crews, what they'll do is like in 15 seconds, this, this rocket ship car will come in and park. And then this pit crew, they will come up and in like 15 seconds, they will clean the windshield. They will change the oil. They will swap out the tires. They will feed you a happy meal. They'll give you a quick massage. And then like, like then you're vroom and you're out of there. Now, the problem is, I think, and I'm not accusing you, check the chip on your shoulder. I'm just acknowledging what we need to acknowledge, that I think it's so easy with the world we live in today to do pit crew parenting, right? It's just these quick 15-second things like, hey, 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 kids, kids, okay, hey, did you get your homework done? Okay, good. Oh, hey, let's hurry up and eat supper. Oh, okay, we got to go to this event. Oh, hey, what, what was first? Oh, we didn't actually eat supper yet. Uh, kids, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. Okay, why don't you see if there's a French fry underneath your seat in the car? You can have that because we're running late. Eat that. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, we're all done. I'm tired. Go to bed. Get out my face right is, is it is that honest is that too honest it's really easy to just have this pit crew parenting mentality um don't don't eat the yellow snow don't have sex till you're married okay good night right like just pit crew parenting pit crew parenting pit crew parenting um and and you know obviously i'm exaggerating just to clarify the point but um there is a little bit of study behind this and jesus modeled what when when things are busy he modeled we're just going to make time for the kids in the kids' best interest to glorify our Father in heaven who always makes time for us, we're going to make time for the kids. So there is a study. Now, the study has changed. Praise God, all the dads in the room, the millennial dads have spent more time with kids than ever in, like, recent American history. Praise God. You guys are changing the data. <clears throat> is that to dishonor any of the dads before you? Absolutely not. You honor and appreciate everything they did because they did the best they could to do the best they could to do the best they could. Amen, family? But uh, there was a study, and I, it's not too old, but it's a little old, that said the average dad spends 37 seconds a day engaged in meaningful conversation with their kids. 37. I've been silent for about five seconds. Ten seconds. <laughs> Meaningful conversation, 37 seconds. 37 seconds. And the reality is, is it's challenging, right? This is messy stuff. What do we say, what do we say a little bit ago? We're all the perfect parent until we have kids, but life's messy. We live in a fallen world, plagued by sin, plagued by an, uh, an enemy who wants to steal, kill, and destroy, including your relationship with your kids. So nothing I'm saying, let's go back. Check the chip on your shoulder. All I'm doing is creating opportunity for clarity to move forward with confidence. Amen? 
okay? Especially, and let's, let's even extrapolate that a little bit farther. Uh, single parents in the room, I love you, I respect you, I see you, I hear you. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough, it's tough, it's tough. Um, and what I want to do is I want to make sure this is a moment of opportunity, not condemnation for anybody. Like some of the things we're talking about, let the church be the solution to your problem, right? Uh, it's really fun that today we started the service with Reba talking about the mom group, right? The mom group wants to walk through uh, parenting situations with you. Let the church be the solution. Let them give you some respite care, right? Let them come and, you know, show you some love. Let them, let them do whatever they can do, but they can't do what they can't do. Amen? So all this to go into abundant time, uh, the reality is that, that sometimes it's just too easy to come up with good excuses. Right? And those of you who know my opinion on excuses, man, good excuses are rarely become bad excuses. Good excuses are always good excuses as long as you choose to use them. I rarely see a good excuse become a bad excuse over time. Right? What we have to do is just acknowledge that the good excuse is just that, a good excuse, and start choosing to acknowledge the excuse and say, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna use excuses. I'm done with excuses. I don't care how good the excuses are. I'm gonna, this is the way I should go. I'll walk in it without excuses. Praise God. All his people said, 